Bill has spent the last 20 years studying Greek, studying Hebrew, and translating the Old and the New Covenant. And he has uncovered things that will make literally your understanding of the Scriptures go to a whole new level. Uh, He's recaptured the Jewish roots. Uh, The idioms, the ancient Jewish idioms, an idiom, an example Bill used earlier was, it's raining cats and dogs. Well, we know that today, but you didn't know the idioms of 2,000 years ago. Uh, Give me a couple idioms that you found and what they mean. Okay, one is with the evil eye, and that's in Matthew 5, 29, if your right eye causes you to sin, you must tear it out at once and cast it from you. And, and believe it or not, people have read that and tried to please God, and <laughs> uh, unfortunately, they, they took their eye out, and that's not what God is saying. What is God saying? What's He's that idiom saying, mean? stop doing it. And what, what the evil eye is, is being stingy or greedy, and that's defined in Deuteronomy 15:9. What about where it talks about cut off your right hand in the, it's the, in same the New thing. Testament? Stop doing that. And the, the right hand, of course, is a hand of power. It always speaks of power in Scripture. So you have to be humble. You have to stop doing whatever it was that you were doing. So if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. But it doesn't mean literally cut it off. No. It means to stop. stop. <laughs> Just, right. Now, now um, on the... And your understanding of the Messianic prophecy. Uh, for instance, in a approved Jewish Bible, Isaiah 7, 14 says uh, we're going to have a sign. A, a young woman will conceive and have a child, and this child's name will be Emmanuel. But in most Christian Bibles, it says a virgin will. Uh, who's right? Well, technically... The Jewish Bible is because the word in Hebrew, Amma, means a marriageable young woman. She is single. And what it is, the, the whole verse is, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the young woman will conceive and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Well, the young woman, unmarried, had to be a virgin. There was a translation called the Septuagint. It was called that because 70 traditional rabbis did this translation. How many years uh, before Jesus came did this? 250 years before Jesus was born. All right, 250 years before Jesus was born, these traditional rabbis, the best in the land, uh, translated the Greek version of the Jewish scriptures, and they chose the one Greek word that means exclusively virgin. Uh, You can't get much stronger than that. You can't beat that, that, no. But I have three footnotes on that verse. And the first one is the sign from the Lord. This birth will be an extraordinary event, bringing an extraordinary person known as God with us. That's what Emmanuel means. God is with us. You know what? I, I, I think <laughs> that, that we've kind of satisfied that particular situation. But you had a revelation bill in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. It's where it says stripes. We well, you know what right. a stripe is. Right. A stripe is where someone is beaten and where blood flows. Right. And from this blood, uh, we, we had such wonderful right. things happen, forgiveness of sin, healing of diseases. But you found the word stripe in the Hebrew means something else also. Yes. Chavurato in modern Hebrew means fellowship with him. And that's, of course, the only way That's God with us. It's through fellowship with Him. The best way to get a a healing is through having intimacy and relationship and fellowship with God. It's because of His blood that we are healed, but it is because of our fellowship that we have a clear passageway for the healing to manifest in our body. Bill, I asked you to pray last night and see if God wanted you to say something special. What did he tell you? Oh, it's on the fellowship. Really? It's all about relationship. And 
those of you out there, I know this is more than one person, says, God is not with me. You have to, you have to accept God in faith. He said he is with you. His word says he is with you. He is in you. So that you, by focusing on him, will know that he is in you when that torment that you're in now, you're in pain. You have to know that the God who is in you feels that same pain, whether it's physical pain or whether it's emotional distress, depression, whatever. He is with you. He feels that. He will take it.